Liverpool are back? Man City is struggling? Is this King Harry Kane? What's up guys, it's TK0442 here bringing you another episode where we are doing the game week uh, 6th as of the Monday the 26th of October. This time we are not joined with CFC News, unfortunately he was not able to join for this podcast but let's straight get into it uh, with the Saturday the 24th of October game 1 where West Ham and Man City played. This was a 1-1 draw. Man City are struggling to win a match. West Ham are doing very well. I think the last four games, uh, two were a win and two were draws. So they're not losing at the moment. And they're against a tough opponent like Man City. They're able to draw, which is very good as well. But on the other hand, Man City are struggling to win, as I said previously. And they need to get a winning streak in hand uh, to even come to fight for the title, actually. So uh, the next match was Fulham vs Crystal Palace where Zaha was the main key player. For the Fantasy Premier League he's a very crucial player, he's pretty cheap as well and I've got him on my team, we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, but in terms of Fulham vs Crystal Palace, 2-1 to uh, Crystal Palace was very good and uh, 3 points for Crystal Palace was uh, fantastic for them. Uh, the next match, which was Man United versus Chelsea, very boring match in terms of gameplay. Um, not much you can talk about in terms of what's happening, apart from one big major thing where Maguire is supposed to get a, at least a yellow card due to the fact that he actually strangled. Uh, I've got his name, I, I can't remember the top of my head, but he was strangling the player, mate. That should be a penalty straight away and it could be an opening for them if there was it was given but unfortunately that wasn't given and it ended up Man United and Chelsea to be 0-0 uh, which is pretty much a dead match to be honest I was expecting a lot of goals but it ended up in a 0-0 game so moving on to the next one which was Liverpool which is Sheffield United where Van Dijk obviously you know already Van Dijk is uh, out for a couple of months or even whole of the season um, which led them to go down in the starting and uh, Sheffield United was able to score the first goal uh, but however uh, Liverpool was able to come back with a uh, beauty uh, from uh, Mane which was rebounded back and uh, Firmino was able to do the tap in for that and a beautiful a, a cross a well uh, from Mane to Diego Jota uh, Diego Jota has been a valuable uh, player that we have bought this season and, and Liverpool are doing very well in terms of that. Going back to the new pair which are in centre-back at the moment, Fabinho we know he's done very good as well as Gomez did very well in that game he was able to uh, track back and uh, stop a lot of uh, opportunity for Sheffield United from scoring and the main key thing was Alisson is back in goal he was a key player that we were missing in that terms uh, I believe that Liverpool will be, be much stronger a team when uh, Thiago comes back as well he'll be able to provide the creativity more goals will be scored uh, when he comes back I believe so uh, in terms of that that was pretty good for Liverpool this actually put them back into joint top with Everton at the moment because as I will come back they lost their match uh, which is actually the next match I believe we're going to go into uh, is Southampton versus Everton where Southampton did a beauty. Um, they did a 2-0 uh, against uh, Everton and uh, they had a, kept a clean sheet as well. Danny Ings, a ex-Liverpool player, was able to get two assists in this case and was able to uh, crush the Everton team in terms of assisting abilities. Moving into the next match where Wolves and Newcastle were able to get a draw as well. Um, and pretty much that's it. Nothing much happened in the game. It was a 1-1 and that's all I can say about that. Uh, and the next match we're going to be talking about is Arsenal vs Leicester. Leicester was not the best in the terms of gameplay during that match. But they were able to get the win. Jamie Vardy scoring a beautiful header which gave them the win was enough for them. Uh, but Lacazette had so many opportunities which he wasn't able to capitalise on. And if he was able to create the goals with all the chances he get, Arsenal would have won that match. 
Arsenal did have a beautiful tactic, but the opportunities weren't capitalised. That's why they lost it. But uh, going into our next match, which happened on Monday, uh, Brighton 1-1, nothing much you can talk about that. Burnley with Spurs, I swear Harry Kane and Son are just a perfect pairing. Mate, they're like couples made for each other, mate, at the moment. One's assisting, one's scoring, one's assisting, the other's scoring. That's basically it to them. So Harry Kane assisted a beautiful assist uh, it's from the corner to uh, Son and Son scores as usual. It was either Son's assisting and Harry's scoring. So if you don't have these two in your fantasy Premier League, you're missing out a lot of points. And I did miss out on a match which was on the Friday on the 23rd of October because I wanted to leave the best to the last. Aston Villa versus Leeds. The team that destroyed Liverpool, Leeds were able to destroy them in the home ground 3-0. Even though Aston Villa did very well, they were playing very good. And mate, Patrick Bramford was able to score a hat-trick within a very short period actually. He scored it on the 55 minutes, 67 minutes and 74 minutes. I believe that team without Patrick Bamford at that point would have actually just draw the match. But hats off to Leeds, man. They're doing very well in this Premier League. And I believe you should have at least one Leeds player in your fantasy Premier League because they're doing very well. They are doing so well in the Premier League. Just questioning why haven't they been in the Premier League for the last couple of years man they are doing so well and hopefully they still do well in the future with a lot of games to still be played so now moving on to the fantasy premier league points uh, i'm just going to quickly wrap up the points for the week five i did very well after a very slow start uh, i was getting penalized by cfc news actually but um yeah i got the most of the points from my captain who had 26 points uh, Son, if I didn't have him as a captain, I would have got 13 points. Uh, Kane again giving me 16 points. Zaha again giving me beautiful 9 points. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Martinez did very well in terms of that as well. And that gave me 89 points. As of now, as of Monday, uh, I've got 60 points. Maybe tomorrow they might add a few more extra points. That's is what uh, the Fantasy Premier League are doing at the moment. They just add a few more extra points uh, the next day and they calculate something. I don't know what they're doing in that terms. But at the moment, I've got 60 points out of game week six, which is very good uh, considering the average at the moment is only 33. And I'm on top of the table. And uh, let's quickly look at CFC News's one. So, um, he did not do very well. He got 37 points in this. He put Sterling as a captain, which was a big mistake. And uh, yeah, he only got four points for that. And uh, week five, he got 77 points, which is pretty good. Uh, the average uh, points for the week five was uh, 60. So yeah, he put Timo Warner as the captain. He got 32 points from Timo Warner. Timo Warner has sing single-handedly basically saved him uh, and got most of the points for him for that week. So in terms of week seven, I have made a couple of changes, I believe, uh, into my teams. And um, I brought in a, a beautiful centre-back. And um, due to the fact that uh, I've played a lot of centre-backs this uh, week, actually, I brought in Chirwell. Uh, he's getting the points in terms of striking abilities. He can go up the field and even score, yeah, assist, as well as uh, uh, Chelsea are getting the defence back together, uh, getting a clean sheet. So it will be great for them as well and it will be great for my fantasy Premier League. I have also bought in Bamford after the hat-trick. Uh, just to get some cash, I don't know, I forgot who I swapped for, uh, but um, he was able to come in for a cheap price. I wanted to save a bit of box on that. Uh, at the moment, my whole team value is pretty good. It's 101.5 million. So it went up by 1.5 million. So I can just uh, splash a bit of cash. And uh, I still got 1 million in the bank at the moment. So that's pretty good. You might think, did I lose four points for making two changes this week? 
Now I kept on my points from last week as well. So if you looked at my old podcast, I was saying that I wasn't making any changes. But yeah, so I was using, I was able to use two of my transfers this week without losing four points. And that was pretty good for me. And next week, I think I'm not going to use any of my transfer points. I'm going to only use them when I actually need them and save them up a bit and use it at the right time. So let's quickly go back into the top scorers of the Premier League as of now. Starting with first place is Son. Oh my God, a top run player with a beautiful uh, streak at the moment. And Kevin Lewin in second place with seven goals and Patrick Bramford with six goals. To be honest, I have all of them in my uh, fantasy Premier League at the moment. So that's pretty good. So the top three for goals, all of them are in my fantasy Premier League. Now looking into the assist, and all I'm gonna be talking about this one is just the top player, who is Harry Kane with eight assists. I'm just gonna quickly look at the goals ratio as well. So he got eight assists as well as five goals which is amazing and he's also in my fantasy premier league so i my team is doing very well in terms of the fantasy premier league uh at the moment and uh, yeah but uh as of the week uh six the table top four i'm just going to quickly go over it everton and liverpool are joint top uh but by points everton are at the top at the moment and liverpool are second aston villa with game in hand they are in third place with 12 points Leicester in fourth place after the win against Arsenal uh, put them there and closely bound are Tottenham and Leeds. Uh, the top four, as I said previously, are the main points at the moment. It's very star and it's anyone's game to be honest. I think anyone can win the Premier League this season. Tottenham, Leicester, Aston Villa, Everton. Very close, very close games. So it will be a more interesting game to watch. In terms of the Premier League, uh, it's a tougher win this season, I believe. And it's anyone's uh, game, as I said previously. And uh, thank you very much for listening to this podcast. And if you like this podcast, uh, make sure you follow this on all of the podcast flat platforms. Uh, I'll be putting this podcast soon on YouTube. So check out my YouTube channel as well. It's called TKO442. And uh, also check out the Instagram page, which is called TKO.442. Thank you very much and have a beautiful day.